Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Curry Cafe. Curry Fat, we talk about just about anything. We come up with a subject and then beat it to death. <laughs> and this week, as usual, I have searched the entire community to find the brightest minds who have the, the most information women. about this. The as, oh, women. Yes, the most yes. attractive uh, women. Attractive. Oh, yeah. you know what? Older Go women. ahead, Shirley, take over. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me. Anyway, uh, and I am here, Shirley Hyatt, and over to you, Billy. And I am here as well, Billy Ruth Furuichi. And me too, Rick McNamer. Okay. And we're ready to go. I didn't mention my name, Ray Gary. <laughs> this subject that we're going to talk about today is cults, and it came up as we were having a little informal discussion after last week's show about how many people are crazy, literally crazy, about Taylor Swift. Now, none of us were Taylor Swift fans, I don't believe, prior to this. In fact, I have to admit, I finally watched the video and was very impressed with her. But after uh, after doing a, a complete examination of what we learned during the coming week about Taylor Swift, we have unanimously voted that she is not a cult. This not, is good. She does not have a cult following. Yeah. Cult following. Yeah. Which really brought us to the conversation of what is the definition of a cult? Because there are people who say, oh, well, that particular religious group is a cult. Now, what makes that a cult instead of just a religious group? Now, Billy, you had something informative to say on that, I think. Well, I did some research about that, that the cult leader has to have the absolute authoritarian uh, command over his followers and his members need to absolutely be 100% loyal to, to him or her. If they're not, they get, not only do they get kicked out, but they get um, lambasted and sometimes threatened. So, so that might be what you'd call a hardcore cult. Is there yeah. lesser, less, lesser hardcore? I yeah. mean, do, you, do we have leaders that say, okay, for you, you can leave mm -hmm. more. Well, I mean, I'm thinking of somebody like Jim Jones and David Koresh. Yeah, those are hardcore cults, but are they the, would you think they're a definition of lesser core cults? Is that, well, are there any that lesser cults? Well, uh, yeah, that's where <laughs> I, I would commit. Well, again, it's not cult. It's idol worship, maybe, that type of thing, like uh, Oprah nowadays and Elvis, but I, I want to just jump real quick back to Taylor Swift. I did the homework. I did watch okay. the video um, and wasn't really aware of her until then, old guy, but I was impressed. Um, she was a pretty good musician and a wonderful singing voice, and I can see why the young folks like it. Now, my granddaughters are coming for a visit this week. They're in their 20s. I'll ask them what their opinion is. They'll probably give me an earful. You know, I, I watched the video, and, and I was, uh, I don't know, pre prepared to be not impressed. And, okay, so, so, as far as a singer goes, she's a good singer. There are other singers I would rather listen to. Lady Gaga and uh, Pink, I think, are better singers, better performers. But she combined all that with a positive message or a message that was that was good and it was well done i didn't understand the choice of the music that went with it because it was about depression and uh i guess he meant suicide and i wish i had written down the, the name of it i guess it's a popular song of hers but yeah i really liked the you know what the song was about and all that so that was i was positively impressed well and you can't now, she's a cult i'm joining <laughs> okay, but you can't discount her appearance, that she's pretty, she's beautiful, she's got this young, gorgeous body, she wears these costumes that are... Who said I discounted like, that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was going to put that... At, if, <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say... I was going to so, put that on the plus side. But. <laughs> <laughs> so if she, if she was just a, a voice we were hearing on the radio, is what we're saying... Uh, she would not have the following because she hasn't got that dramatic a voice. She's not Ella Fitzgerald. She's not exactly. got a Frank Sinatra or an Elvis or whatever. It's the package. It's the package of 
uh, the dance and the the background and the whole thing that makes her into like a come alive Barbie doll, as far as I'm concerned. It's, but her, yeah. but her message is absolutely yeah. positive. And but see, I don't teach. listen enough to her to know what her messaging is. But I'll yeah. I will you I will give you that. Yeah. I will say yeah. okay. But um, but what what makes people glom onto somebody like that and raise them above their humanity of just saying, well, there's a pretty girl who can sing, and there she is, and she can dance, and she can play. There's something beyond that. And is it her message? Is it that she has a positive message that the kids are relating to? Or does she have an uh, an adult audience? Oh, I think I mean, she does. Yeah, I think does so. has an adult audience. Yeah. So she's just representative of what we're saying. Is this but, a cult? No. But I think, she's, she's, I think her message is subliminal to all of that. Fr- is that frou-frou, yeah. I think it, it sinks in on a subliminal level to okay. the audience. Well, I haven't listened enough, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. I know two people of my age who went to see the movie when it came here who didn't know anything about her. Uh, the one person asked me to go, and I said, all I've seen is teenage girls being interviewed coming out, and I don't think that's something. And both of them, who had never really paid any attention to or even heard her, paid $20 to go see the tickets. Hmm. And the reason they went to see this, I think it's because of the hype that was so hyped uh, that you, you almost had to go see it. Isn't that the entertainment world? It nowadays? is. It is so exactly. It's it all about hype, whether it's yeah. music or sports. We have, or, as we speak, there are half loaded people sitting, oh, <laughs> eating, oh. eating chicken wings and drinking right. beer and <laughs> having Super Bowl <laughs> parties, and it ain't nothing but a football game. And Taylor Swift, <laughs> of course, is and, part of that. Oh, is she going to be there? Uh, oh, she's when gonna, I, of course, when, she's huh? be there. Yes, of course, because she's going with one of the. Yes, I, I know, yes. I know, but I th- I thought there was a question. Wasn't she in Poland yesterday or something? Uh, yep, uh, Japan, and oh, okay. whether she could so, make it back. Yeah, that's the big be drama. At, there'll be cameras at the airport oh, as that plane that. lands. <laughs> sure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, of course, it's morphed into the political realm. Yeah, of course it has. Of, yeah. Oh, of another cult, in my opinion, but it, it, it's just morphed into that now, so it's... Again, I well, I watch oh. it when I get home. Yeah, I'll probably turn it on. I'm not a sports fan anymore, but there's enough drama there that it's going to tweak yeah. or pique my interest. Yeah. Yeah. When well, you say I, the political, you, you're talking about the conspiracy theory that she's going to make some announcement. That, that too. Yeah, it's all good. of that. All of that. And the, uh, you know, certain people, I, now, yeah. now they're, it's odd because apparently the, let's, the conservative uh, re- realm is going to be pulling for, I think, San Francisco, the sin city of the world, because of Taylor Swift's Supposedly, yeah. boyfriend for the Kansas City Chief. Yeah. Oh. Now, again, that's like National Enquirer stuff out there, but that's part of the whole thing, right? You now. know, I was I was a Brooklyn Dodger fan oh. way back in when, and some of you don't even know the Dodgers were in that's not oh, foot, yeah. That's not football, Ray. I know it's not, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, if, you, if you give me a few minutes, yeah, I'll, 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 I don't know much about sports, but... Okay. <laughs> and and when I was a kid growing up on Long Island and born in Brooklyn, I mean, the, the Brooklyn Dodgers were just like everything in the world. But the Yankee fans thought that, and the and and the, and the uh, Giants, Giants fans thought that too. But that was yeah, it was very important in my life. Yeah. And I forgot the point. I had a well, point. The, Sports the or... point is, is that a cult follow? Oh Are no 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 nothing even of, nothing even no, close. No, no, but things like when. Uh, uh, the, the the Dodgers were down by three runs, and there's two people on, and Jackie Robinson gets comes up, and there's two outs. Jackie Robinson was going to score. He was going <laughs> to pull the game out for us. He'd get a walk or do something, and then he'd steal second, third, and home, and he won the ball game. Yeah. How wonderful, I It guess. was. <laughs> uh, it's only recently I tell this to people that I have gotten over the fact that the Dodgers left Brooklyn. <laughs> Well, it, it, that that's a whole well, other story. Are still mad. <laughs> yes, this is but, a different topic. Yeah, ahead, but, but okay. you no, know, yeah. I did see I did see a couple interviewed before I turned off the TV to come over here. A couple interviewed on their way in to see the Super Bowl, and the woman said, "I took out a loan, yes, to buy the tickets so that I could." Oh, get. Wow. I mean, how how crazy is that? I don't, I don't house get it. See. They don't want to see the game. Because they could stay home and watch it on TV. They want to be in the environment. Mm-hmm. They want to be part of that scene. And and that's 
that's kind of cult-like in a yeah, way. It's like, cool. I want to be one of the in people, the the person sitting in the stadium where maybe the the camera will pan over to me or, or and I'll go yeah. home and I'll get to see a rerun and there yeah, I'll be. That's a good you know. point. Yeah. It's a, it's a I, very, very that, weird. It's, 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 it's a passion. And I used yeah. to have that passion years ago for sports. It, it was buddies coming over and we're drinking and yeah. having a good time. And I, and I did play football in high school and one year in college. Yeah, and it was fun for me. And I was really into it. But but it has morphed but into... But this is different. What's that? This is different, well, what's it, going on yeah, today. It, it has yeah. changed uh, yeah. big time where I I just don't even enjoy watching it anymore. I really don't. You know, it used to be uh, with, with baseball, I, I, that's the only sport I ever followed, that every summer you knew that um, Gil Hodges would be at first base, Jackie Roberts would be at second base or shortstop, <laughs> and who would be there in the, and now it's you don't you don't root for the team and your and your favorite people anymore. You root for the shirt mm-hmm. because Jackie Robinson might be on the another team if he got bought out by right. and yeah. just, nobody. Which, plays by for the one way, team by the way, getting back to my ra- ranting about uh, Brooklyn Dodgers, <laughs> not many people even seem to realize this that Jackie Robinson was in fact traded to of all people the Giants. When the when the Dodgers well, that's left, probably them. not right. No, well, the Giants were the <laughs> were the were the arch enemies of every Brooklyn Dodger fan. And, I will I will I will just uh, believe you when you say that. Okay, well, you just ask any Brooklyn Dodger <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mom when she was seventy five years old, and I had just first married Isamu, who brought him back to America, and we're sitting watching the Broncos and the Super Bowl. My mom was a huge fan. And she jumped up and down, and she would tell the coach, over the top, over the top, when they were at the three-yard line. She taught Isamu how to watch football. Mm. I never watched it. I couldn't get it at all. I never. You couldn't get yelling at the television screen. Uh, yeah, but she did. She was 75 years old, jumping up and down. She was amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I used to spend a lot of the winters in Fort Lauderdale at my sister-in-law's house. And uh, her husband was, was a fan, and we'd have several people over the house uh, when this when the Super Bowl was on, but we were all in the kitchen, eating or drinking or just and and my brother in law was out there, just sitting on the edge of his chair, you know. So I thought, well, geez, I can't let Bob just sit out there through the whole game. I'll I'll go sit with him a little bit, but I, I absolutely could not stand it. I could not the the cliches and all the just oh my god, it was I, awful. I think where where we're going with this, at, at least what's triggering for me is there are people who do things and there are people who don't and they want to be part of that person's world that is doing something. Mm-hmm. Like if if Taylor Swift is this person, just to use her as an example, um, I, I'm sure there's a Barbie doll with a Taylor Swift wardrobe. I mean, I'm sure there, there are little girls who want to look like her. I'm sure there are people who want their hair styled a certain way or whatever. And I'll just boil it down to my own philosophy, which is you either know yourself or you don't know yourself and you put yourself into somebody else's aura. And and maybe that's what cultism really is all about. It's not about figuring out how who you are and exploring your own talents or whatever, but you feel you're missing something that somebody else has got. And you have to go to them in order to get it. And that's like the cult leader in a religious sense mm-hmm. and and maybe in other ways, too. I mean, why, why do people follow Trump when he says crazy, crazy things and they sit in the audience and laugh, but they still think that somehow he's the most important person in the world? And it's very, very hard for me to understand that because well, what is, he says, is that, is that only, a cultism? Not... He says crazy things. He's well, he's yeah. praising dictators around the world, the yeah, worst no dictators. And he talks about if he's their friends, we're going to get along. You know, well, he was a good friend with the the the, the dictator of North Korea who made a total fool out of him by disarmament. You know, when he didn't disarm any damn. But thing. what is it? But what he did do? People? What he what this, the the dictator in uh, in North Korea did get was the attention of the world. He's got the president of the United States coming to. His yeah. little country, but that so diminished the title of being president of the United oh, States. But brief, yeah. but at any rate, what is it that attracts people 
Billy, go May, ahead. I, I would like to jump in here yes, because please. I think you nailed it when you said, when you asked that question, why do people uh, get sucked into cults? And it's basically the insecurity, some basic insecurity on their part that they need someone to dominate them because they don't want to have to make decisions. In fact, we as a country are are, are hoping to dumb down our population so that they don't have to think critically, so that they don't have to make decisions about things. They want someone to be a dominant leader. That's why people go into cults. Do you, do you I think believe. there's actually a, a movement to dumb down the country? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. that's not the he, topic he today, say, but he says well, that. that is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Knowing full well that you know that that's the truth, Ray. Of course it is. You uh, you know darn well that's what it is. It, I'll be, I'm well, sorry. I'm glad but, you told me what I know. No, this, <laughs> don't, no, that's not our topic today, though. Oh. But we could have a topic about that, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. But the whole point of it is that if you think that somebody else is smarter, wiser, whatever it is, that you disconnect yourself from your own reasoning power and allow that they know that they have the truth, that somehow they are mm -hmm. the person that you admire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's a, a political leader or a religious leader, a cult leader, a musical leader, whatever it is, if you admire someone, that's different. That's when you turn your own philosophy sort of over to that other person. You absorb what it is that they have as opposed to relying on your own abilities and your own thought process. I don't know. I, I can't beat that drum drum loudly enough. I think we just we just yeah. are willing as a species just to not explore our own values, but to allow that somebody else knows better, that they somehow have a secret that we don't have. And when when I I read a book when I was at UCSC in 1970 probably 374 Alvin Toffler wrote a book called Future Shock and I was in a I think a cultural anthropology lecture hall or something and this is exactly what his book is about in way back then and he said the, that people are losing their root system their root structure of that solid fam, familial structure and they want somebody to take over because they don't have that in their own family. You know, this is a little embarrassing to admit, but I, I'll say it. And I came from a very good family structure, very good. But in my uh, mid-20s, in you know, my, I had some troubles in my life. I was roped into, I, I, I look back on it now, probably a cult. It was a religious organization. Um that my, at the time, fiance, her brother was a pastor, and I kind of felt obligated anyway. And being in the mid-20s, you're pretty impressionable, yes, you and you're are. vulnerable. Yeah, I was vulnerable. Yes. So I was there for probably probably about three months, but the one, finally something kicked in, uh, sanity, I guess. <laughs> it, it, was at, it was at one, you know, uh, church meeting, and somebody got up, and they were speaking in tongues, supposedly, and that was weird, and a little bit rolling on the floor, and I, it just clicked. I thought, man, this is crazy town So stuff. that was an but, apostolic church, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, they call it the Four Square. Yeah. Something Four Square was a little town of Penryn down there out of Sacramento. But anyway, oh, huh. um, I guess my point is I think it, 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 the younger you are, I'm assuming the more vulnerable you might be to to follow something like that. I was surprised I even got that deep into it, but I am so glad I got out. And that pretty much shut the door for the rest of my life on any kind of, quote, religion. I thought, okay, I don't need any of this. But anyway, I just had to let that out. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we had, what did we have? Jim Jones and we oh, had uh, David Koresh and we had, who are these others that we had? <laughs> the Oh, the Heaven's Gate guy. And I had oh, the yeah. Bogwan yeah. here uh, in the Oregon. The Bogwan, yes. That was a pretty scary uh, deal. Yeah. They, well, they all are. What's it? Well, Bogwan Rajneesh. Yes. Perump. He oh, had the gun the Rolls Royces? Yeah. Yeah. They built a community up there. Yeah. They even went my dad's town, the Dalles up there. Now, he wasn't living there then, but they had gone in there and poisoned the... One of the buffet that didn't kill people, but made them sick. You know, I mean, they were just really crazy stuff. Oh. But they, they took over a town, 
Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I've seen the the documentary on that. Mm -hmm. I heard that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. it's on on Netflix, isn't it? It seems like it is on Netflix. I saw it too. Yeah, Yeah. there's also there there a lot of cults in Mexico and along Mm -hmm. those same lines and in Venezuela that um, um, just I guess heaven only knows. I think it's vulnerabilities. It's just. It's sure. just lack, well, we lack, lack, to belong. lack to belong mm-hmm. to something. We didn't even mention Manson for heaven. Oh, Manson, right. Let me just take yeah. a quick break from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, Shirley said you need to belong to something. Mm-hmm. If you need to belong to something, we have, I think, a few openings at KCIW for volunteers. <laughs> and you could be Good part of any wonderful organization. Yes, there. Yes. Yes. Right. And we're not going to ask you to give us all your money. Some. <laughs> So, but not and all. And we of won't it. punish you if you don't. <laughs> uh, and we uh, won't uh, take uh, away your firstborn or anything. But like we'll that. talk about you when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What kind of openings here at KCIW? Oh, just anything you want. I think I don't. I don't know. We would turn you over to uh, <laughs> Candace or one of those <laughs> m- mean people well, already, who will just say, "You're gonna do this." I'm already highly involved, but you know, there. I bet there are some high school kids that we could get roped into we're, learning how to. We're do working it. on that. Yeah. yeah. Evidently, you didn't get the memo. No, no. I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back to. Um, I did write down in. Billy, we're talking about the dangerous cults. You mm-hmm. pretty much covered all the ones I. But I added in this uh, cult light, or what, if you want to call it, kind of the idol worship that we have. Yes. And uh, uh, well, ta- right now, I guess you could include Taylor Swift in that for the young, mostly young kids. Elvis had it. Grateful Dead mm-hmm. still have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, oh, Bruce Springsteen's another one I think that had, but. Um, I was going to go somewhere else. I and, thought, and I had a thought. These people that you mentioned all have the ability to influence people too. Well, true, yeah. true. I mean, it's, um, Springsteen was an unabashed uh, Democrat and would right would on stage on his concerts right. he'd, he'd uh, talk about the Democratic candidates. Yeah, and um, I, yeah. With the de- the dead must have had some kind of a liberal following. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> liberal, I, I, liberal I, and stoned. But yeah, I think yeah. They were totally. Apolitical, that were they? Yeah, as was as was well, Elvis. What weren't they? Or, uh, look, I, I put down Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, and I put that down because it's uh, amazing what great music they had, but they were well known for fighting amongst each other, oh, yeah. and being real jerk. I'm going to the jerk area, I guess, <laughs> where I was going. <laughs> um, as far as the, I think Elvis. I don't know about a jerk, but he just got. Playing kind of crazy. I mm-hmm. I don't know if that was in him at the beginning or it, or they made him that way. Yeah, but the, I mean, he what, was, what I, happened was he he was trying to get above what he had been doing. He hated making those movies and the silly songs. Oh, they were stuff. horrible. And, I thought, but he he was were... totally loyal to to Colonel Sanders, who was in debt up to his eyeballs in Vegas and had to be turning out those stupid movies. And he also had the Memphis Mafia, which were his friends as he developed in the army and along the way. Really? And they did not have near the sophistication that Elvis did. And when he started getting into things like uh, um, Eastern religions and things like that, they just didn't understand him, pushed him away as best they could. And I didn't know that about him. I, yeah, I didn't either. I knew the I know the Beatles went kind went kind of that way. Yeah, well, that way. you know, Elvis wasn't if. Did, it wasn't like out there, like his whole private life was out there. There's okay. stuff that, you know, that, uh, Lisa Marie and all of those people, but he wasn't, you know, the, the, the Beatles made part of their their hype, their their personal life. Yeah, okay. And I guess I was going to align it a little bit with the cult. I've got a very good dear friend, a uh, high school buddy that we talk a lot, but he was a an Elvis nut, and he went around the local area, to, did the... Uh, Elvis impressed. Yeah. Anyway, named his both of his sons Elvis. He's got <laughs> tattoos of Elvis. <laughs> He's a wonderful, nice guy, man. But I, I thought that's a level that it's that kind of cultish there to cult. me. That's on the edge. Um, you know, and that's my point. It's these idols that you can have uh, can kind of get you in a in a crazy way. Now, as a young man, younger man, I mean, I was. 
as a kid, I remember watching comedy. I was Albert or Albert <laughs> Abbott and Costello, uh, Laurel and Hart. They, they weren't yeah. idols, but I was really into those people. Yeah. And then neither one of the oh Bob Hope Bing Crosby movies. As a kid, I thought the, the, Marx the greatest. Brothers, huh? What's that? Marx Brothers. Oh, Marx Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. yeah, still. But then you learn later, especially Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, especially Bing Crosby. What kind of creepy people that they they were that you of course you don't realize watching the movies and and nowadays I mean everything you do is out there social media. well and that that's JFK real. for heaven's sake as a little kid man I was oh my god what a wonderful president and didn't you know was it really politically uh, well once you get out in that way people want to know what you eat for breakfast they want to know you know right. absolutely everything about you right I wanted to shift gears oh, just since a I'm bit. approaching that status. Uh, just today, I, I reduced my breakfast to one piece of toast, and that, <gasps> reducing my carbohydrates by that much. But anyway, go ahead. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> no, I, want, I wanted to go back and just touch on something and see if you guys agree with me about how, as a species, um, let's, let's say you want to be a, a, a Roman <laughs> watching <laughs> the gladiators fight it out, you know. People gather to see something happening, mm -hmm. and and they applaud for one person or the other. So I'm I'm going back to that, and I'm saying, okay, the gladiators, bullfighters, mm -hmm. you're you're rooting for the bull, or you're rooting rooting for the matador. But as a species, we tend to want to gather and see somebody else do something, and maybe that comes from long ago. So we want to get into a big arena and watch a little person up on the stage a mile away, you know, singing a song. So it comes from someplace deep in us, I think, that we that we want to get together and we also want to make somebody more important than we are. And maybe that comes back to something as simple as people who have talent that they have found in themselves and are exploring and are putting out there in the world and the other people who don't. They they may have abilities, but they never go there. They never find out what their particular gift might be. So I think we tend to be um, a species that wants to watch rather than to be... Maybe either. we should have started out there? with this. I know Billy has done some research yeah. and uh, well, she has a list of yeah, things. That, <laughs> that was on cults, but what, what uh, Shirley just was talking about is so interesting as a species. Maybe we are predisposed to want to have somebody out there yeah. to put themselves out, but I think so, we also want to watch the cars crash. We want to watch the bullfighter get gored. We want to watch. I always root for the bull. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bull guy. <laughs> I I think as a species, we we do want to watch those things. A car crash. Uh, do we need uh, that kind of stimulus? Is it um, maybe? I, and, I, somebody I, mentioned before uh, being in a big arena and the singer is way down there and you can't even see them. It, it's the experience. I've more than once gone to things. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw. Um, Oh, <laughs> somebody, the, the, the somebody. country country singer that everybody liked the has the pigtails and uh, oh, family. Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. Oh my God. Willie Nelson. Okay, so uh, I don't know if he was just having an off night or if he's really getting old. But and it was in a very small venue. It was in a like a a, a casino uh, theater, not unlike not any bigger than the one that that we have here up the road. Well, he is getting old. Yes, but. My, my my wife was saying, I'm going to take that guitar away from him and smash it on the stage. <laughs> like I said, I don't know if he was having it, but one of the best things to my thinking of his songs were his guitar playing. It was kind of, I guess it was not unique, uh, what, but, yeah. uh, what Shirley would consider good guitar playing, I bet you. Right? Was he off key or off something? But anyway, he wasn't <laughs> even doing that well. He's forgetting the words to his songs and things like that. I left there thrilled. I I was in the same room with Willie Nelson. Yeah. Oh, no, same thing with BB King, but BB King was still. I went there to the, the experience of being in a room with BB yeah. King. So it didn't matter that he he wasn't. He on could have knowledge. sat there and drank a bottle of tequila like he and used to. I would have been pleased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do are people imbued with a certain aura? Do you think? I mean, they're just people. Mm -hmm. Are they attract other people? 
Like they just walk down the street and people look at them and they go, oh, boy, I'd like to know that person yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, think I, I think some have it, some don't, mm-hmm. I suppose. Yeah. And that's part of it. They just have a light around them. Yeah, they do. They seem to have something that draws people. But, you know, I, but I also think that we are always looking outside. And I have, to, I have to go to religion on that. Whatever the religious thought is, it, it seems to take us out of our everyday and into a place that we imagine is going to be so much more wonderful than it is here. So I don't think most people with a religious bent say, I can't wait to get to hell. You know, they, they're <laughs> like, I, I can't wait to get to heaven, you know, whatever, whatever that is. So there's something about our makeup that that we're not contented to be where we are. We're not we're not looking at life as just this experience that we're in, but we want to find something else. We want to know why we are here and where we're going, where we came from, and then enter religion or enter somebody who says, "Well, I have the answer. I have the answer. I have the answer to that. You know, you let me tell you yeah. about that." Mm-hmm. And so I think that age-old question of saying, what the heck are we doing here? How did I get here? Where am I going? It, Those are the things that make us attracted to somebody who seems to know more than we do. And if we buy into it, we buy into it. So, okay. and I would join a cult oh, led by an archaeologist. I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> As to the why are we here part. Yeah. <laughs> Watch uh, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Yes. Which yes. Right. Everything. yes. Yeah, we talked about that when we I talked about movies. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I, I think you're right that, that uh, if if somebody hasn't evolved, that's exactly where they are. Uh, we're supposed to be evolving, though, you know, out of that and I, becoming more aware of our inner life and, and who we are at, internally and yeah. be more self-sufficient. But Learning so much about is, the universe and, and, yeah. and where we came from. Yeah. And our society is not set up for that. It's not. Yeah. And it's getting more and more not set up for that. When you, go, when you start going crossways on religious believing, then, then it really gets odd. To, when, well, when you get you know, up there, there's a There's a show I just watched the other night about, the, it's called The Two Million Year Old Boy, and they're finding now fossils and things that go way beyond what we ever thought uh, existed. Yeah. Well, and but, these, these are like pre-humans or something. But, but that, again, is, is getting into conflict with what a lot of people are hanging on to their biblical Yes, this was not the, it was not a Garden of Eden in location. No, there, were no, yeah. there weren't any snakes or anything around there. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so I, I think that in itself answers a lot of what we're talking about with religious cults or people are looking to well somebody said they've got that figured out so we'll we'll go with them yeah. you know and and then like billy you were saying if it's truly a cult if you try to get out it it's like the crab trying to crawl out of the right, bucket right. the other the other crabs will pull them back They'll in again back you know in. that's right so it's hard hard to break away and that's what brainwashing is that what we consider it's brain I would brainwashing? call it that Absolutely. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we've mentioned the Scientology. I was just oh, going to ask right. yet, yeah, but there. What and what blows oh. my mind about that is, I, I guess nobody can say it's proven, but the quote celebrities that do belong, they still come out and they're still on, you know, Oprah's show. Or I guess yeah. I don't know why, but and and it it boggles my mind that we would even give them that the time of day when it's pretty well known that they're well, a cult. I, but, it, I guess that's just my opinion. I, the only thing I know about Scientology was the the show that, uh, um, oh, the little clowns, the, the cartoon, South Park. South Park oh, did a show. Oh, oh God, yeah. no, they, oh, they, they did, did one. They, they did one on the Mormon too. Job. But uh, <laughs> yes, they they did. They did. <laughs> so I just, how could somebody possibly even begin to believe something as nutty as Scientology? Oh, yeah. And take it so seriously that yeah, they, they really do. do. Well, you know, they go track started. down people that have tried to get out and they've been Right. It was but started see, once by... you step into that and once you get into a belief system that it starts to make sense to you, then you want to hang on to it. But these aren't the dumb power. people that, that uh, this Movie star, the guy that does all those Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, and neither of them are stupid people. No, I, and no. It, again, it's, that's the mind See, now, part. now you've touched on something, too. It isn't about your intelligence, is it? 
Mm-mm. It's it's got to be something else that touches people that allows them to walk through that door. Because if you're really using your intelligence, you wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole, right? You'd right. go, oh no, 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 I see that, I see that coming, and I'm not going there. But people who don't have a sense of themselves are looking for somebody else to tell them. Mm-hmm. And sure. that's what it's really about. Well, Somebody else I, knows I had better. some of that, probably. Yeah. You know, uh, hopefully you most people grow out of that. Or most people grow out of that. See the world as it is, yeah. Uh, but then we jump right back where we started. Most religions are pretty cultures. How about the oh, pick a mega pastor with a church that holds five? Uh, oh, yeah. And yeah. and the money keeps rolling in, well, and, the, and they're found out to yeah. be... Frauds and they or just, pedophiles or something. Oh, yeah, Jesus yeah. wants him that to have thing. a new jet plane. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Jesus would have a new plane. Of yeah, he here. would. <laughs> but, and you know that that's a whole other part of this. Perhaps you know this this we've always had the the <clears throat> circulation of oh the 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 second coming this this man is going to appear again. Hmm. The i the idea of being saved by somebody. I think that's very hard for me to come by. But the people who willingly give their life savings over to one of these They did that church with people. Est. To go into Est, they would pay to get to the next level of yeah. Est and the next level and the next level. Forgot about that. Yeah. Big money yeah. went into that guy's right. pocket. And all done with the idea that, that you're really smart. You know, you're, yeah, these, yeah. these are not dumb bums. <laughs> these are really intelligent people. But it... It's fascinating because we're talking about our intellig- our brains, our emotional life mm. tied in with our curiosity or our longing to know. Is it that simple that we're still always just longing to know something? We want to know the ending of the movie, you know? We want to know what's going to happen, and we think somebody else has written the script, and they know, and we don't, so... I don't know. It's um, but it can't be the same for everybody. Like no, and it, like no, it Tom isn't. Cruise. He's yeah. after power, yeah. uh, I'm, and and recognition of of the fact that he's he's um, going to be on the twelfth level in the outer space wherever they go later, <laughs> and and have all the power to rule the world. So <laughs> they you want, you say. You're saying intelligence has nothing to do with it. Doesn't intelligence give you a certain amount of analytical, analytical theory? Well, not, thinking? Not, thinking. not necessarily. You well, have to have emotional what's intelligence. confusing okay. about it, I think, because, well, you know, I, I think if you are intelligent, then how do you, how do you get so easily led? Because what, you have no what emotion. Is, that? is it laziness? I'm easily Boy. led just because I'm, I'm too lazy. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll follow you anywhere. You know? And... Billy brought up power. I, I, I'm assuming Tom Cruise and John Travol. I, I think once they're in, I think they're they're goaded with more power, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. and as far as Tom Cruise, it amazes me too. <laughs> Boy, this sounds so National Enquirer-ish, but <laughs> the, as cruel as he treated the people, he, like his wife who left or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like cruelty there. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think that comes along with power. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think you you think that you can do no wrong. And so, but his his wife was pretty powerful too. I can't remember her name. The like Australian Katie, act- actress, Katie, Katie Holmes. Oh no, no. the Australian actress wasn't oh, that yeah. Nicole? Oh, something. Nicole yes, Kidman. yeah, oh, yeah. But was she right. wasn't in that. I think she. Oh, no, she, she got out of it before. Okay. Yeah, yeah she didn't get into. It. But but those those people are not really cultish. But the the whole idea of looking up to somebody else to draw the roadmap for you mm-hmm. and that Scientology well, to say, well, if you oh, come with us okay. and you go through the steps and you do the things, then we can guarantee to you hey, that you will I, be uh, you know, the, uh, the, the God over your own universe. I mean, whatever. The minute somebody wants some of my money, I get skeptical <laughs> right away. <laughs> That's, if it, yeah, if, if I have to to get on a website or something, you know, the introductory offer. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> another good point. And they have your credit card, and you will never get <laughs> un uh, No, no, I forgot <laughs> back to my one little church thing I was talking about. That's another thing. Before, uh, it's just my fiancé and I would, never happened, but we had to be counseled by that certain pastor. Uh-huh. And of that course. was another one, but this might sound, well, maybe I'm cheaper than I thought. 
but he started bringing up, well, you know, you're going to have to tithe. Yes. And I, I'll never forget right. this, never forget this. I was young and whatever, but I said, is that gross or net? <laughs> and I'm serious about it because when I heard I wasn't making much money, I go, 10%. It's gross. And yeah, it's boy, gross. did that throw him a curve. Yeah. <laughs> it was shortly after that I was gone anyway. My sure, it, I had because to, I, I don't believe in tithing that. Oh, my no. first wife converted to, to Mormonism while we were married, and uh, I had one of the... Um, missionaries in the house one day and he's telling me about tithing which i had never heard of i grew up in the catholic church and every sunday you threw a buck in the plate as it yeah. came around you know and i thought that was pretty good and he's and i said 10 percent of what <laughs> you know, I, I could not believe it right well i think when you boil all of that down if i may speak from experience you know when when you take religion let, let's just call it christianity for the sake of it whatever profession that is it's always about money isn't it mm. you know the widow's might is a story that comes to my mind well, that's the, the, one, the yeah. woman who yeah you know crawls crawls over glass to give the priest the last cent that she has mm -hmm. you know and to offer her prayer you know there there's there's always an element of control there's always in that that you must do this and you must have that i mean look at the gazillion dollars that they're spending to repair the the church in um, in France, uh, Saint Pat. What yeah. is, what is the yeah. cathedral that mm. that burned up? Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Notre Dame. Uh, it's important to mankind somehow mm -hmm. to have these enormously beautiful. I mean, I'm not discounting that, but to pour all of this money into a building and then call it the house of God, for example. I mean, it's like, what does that really mean? You know, but it's an architectural. It, it is architecturally it's historic. Oh, it's a historical thing. I mean, it's I, a it's, monument to it's history. It's overwhelming. I mean, I've been in the cathedral in mm -hmm. in um, New York, and you walk into a place like that, and I've been in temples, and, mm -hmm. and it's like there is something just in the being, mm -hmm. just in the building in itself, the building. that is awe inspiring. Yeah, and they did it with. And, and is Without that, machines, they didn't have bulldozers and and, and all those other. I I just like to clarify something quick. Uh, we're, we're all agreeing that that the uh, churches are are all in it for the money, and that's certainly not true. We have a church here who's not in it for the money by any means, and I'm sure there's a lot of them around uh, around right around around. I think yeah. that does need to be said. That yeah, not uh, all churches are. We don't want yeah. to just plain agreed. Greed, greedy. Yeah, yeah we don't want they Saint, are Saint, people we don't want people to think that we think Saint Timothy is well. A well, maybe yeah, maybe they are helping people. A point that I need to make in that, and and maybe there's a need that mankind has for something at, that is fulfilled through going and being in one of these just in exquisitely built buildings. There's there's something overwhelmingly spiritual about it, maybe. Just to walk into one of those places, oh, you know I'm what sure, I'm talking yeah. about? Well, I, I, I can kind of get that. Yeah, like being in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. You've been yeah, there, yes. right? right? Or, I mean, or Carnegie Hall. Or yes, yes you and it's that just that like same. it's mm -hmm. in the building itself. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that puts me in another direction. Here I get that about. walking the beaches here myself. Yeah, there you go. But that you know, yeah, yeah. everybody has a different. Level Everything's life. energy. Or going to Egypt and seeing the pyramids, or going to Greece and seeing the Parthenon, or going. Or yeah, seeing yeah. coming to my garage and seeing a Model T. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm. I'm. Uh, I started watching. A, uh, change the subject quick. <laughs> um, uh, a YouTube video. This guy has just acquired a Model T, and he's and he's wondering what to do with it, and he's taking things off. And in the comments, people are saying, "Well, you can make a drift car out of it," and all this. Uh, oh, so I wrote what? him a drift. They car. skid all over. Skidding. It's a stupid thing, but any, oh. anyway, anyway, a Model T would be awful. So I, I wrote him a comment begging him not to cut it up, and I said, "You have a piece of American history there in pretty good shape, <laughs> and restore it, or go get a sixty something." 442 and you can tear that up and sell the Model T to somebody who appreciates it. Do you have a Model T? Yes. Oh my god. Ray Ray belongs to the Model T cult. Well, I I, be, I see there I would go. just fall there down and go. bow at your knees to be a member <laughs> of your cult. We well, I will I will yeah, I I'll, uh, I'll, I'll permit you in my garage. <laughs>
So, I, so I have to have a donation, though. Oh, so oh no. Tithe, okay, well. Tithing. Well, you can just donate. You don't have to pay. You can donate. <laughs> yes, if you, oh, yeah, but if we want okay. to touch the model. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be that right. That's a whole right? other thing. <laughs> right now, every horizontal surface in my garage, and there are a lot of them, are covered with parts of the Model T. Cause it's, oh, wow. um, no, it's restoring. not really a Model T. It's a wannabe Model T. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a, just... it's a used-to-be. <laughs> <laughs> well, people worship all kinds of things, you know. Well, so speaking of go. which, I know Billy brought a list of 11 things, and she's probably oh my gosh. wanted to do that research. She wants to get into it, I'm sure. Well, but I got into most of it, but uh, oh. I mean, just, <laughs> I've already said this. Number one, absolute authoritarian with no ac accountability. Number two, zero, um, zero to no uh, uh Awareness of that criticism can be even brought into any discussion. Uh, lack of meaningful financial disclosure. Uh, uh. Unreasonable fear about the outside world that often involves conspiracies about something evil out there is going to get you if you don't come and go to me. You mean like a deep state? Or hell, <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, or deep state, yeah. Former followers are wrong if they get out. Yeah. Yes. Abuse of members if they get out. Record vi Recordings and videos um, that document the abuse of the leader are forbidden. <laughs> okay, then I won't. Anyway, and well on known. and on. I mean, it goes yeah. on and on, yeah. Yeah. How about yeah. some of these uh, idols, uh, they're not cults, but that, boy, at once most people used to idolize, and then now they've, in my opinion, I wrote down Oprah, for one. I mean, I, her humble beginnings were great, and I just think she's gone way overboard. But speaking well, of, yeah. do you remember her humble beginnings? What's that now? She used to have a a, uh, a shock show. She'd have people on, and... Oh, uh, I did, like no. pregnant nuns and things like that. And it, it used to be the joke, you know, you keep doing that and you're going to wind up on Oprah. Oh, Back, God, I, I don't know, how many years ago? That. I thought you were just a little, like a Phil Donahue type no, talk show no, out of no, Chicago. No, okay. No. She, well, had a, she had a main that. show that was that was just like Jerry Springer. Really? Oh, okay. In fact, then. she may have been the originator of okay, that. Okay, then. Like, like Gilda Renner or Emily Latella? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, well, well, I did um, uh, Bill Cosby. Man. As a kid, I I just loved Bill. I thought he was one of the funniest guys, and you know, found out he had feet of clay. To see him come yeah. crashing down, um, you know, I don't know. I saw, of course, two doctors, and I have that in parentheses: doctors Phil and Doctor Oz. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Oprah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Oprah, yeah. You know, uh, carnival or carny type people. I think. Yeah. Uh, the snake oil. Sales. Well, they they know how to get the public's attention. And Boy, they, they know do, how to and that's the social media. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. the social media. But uh, in in TV. defense of Oprah, I I think that that she did touch a lot of people. In in that in that she did have some good things to say, and yeah. she did get people. She's not dead. Get she's their still she's, she's oh, still no, around, yeah. but. She doesn't have a show, does she? Does she have a show? She has a network. I think it's too big to have a show now. I guess she has the Oprah book. Network. Was yeah, that? Yeah, that, that yeah. She does have an Oprah Network. Hey yeah. man, it's, well, but that's made a good business. Whatever she's successful. Got, well, again, got it's right. asking people to believe that what she has to say is important and is more. You're going to learn something. You're going to become a better person. If you listen to what that other person has to say. Yeah, it's but like, I, I guess that's where I, I give her the check. Negative check marks with the doctors that Phil and Oz that she was the one that brought them. I guess. Well, that's true. That, that's, oh, really? That's she, true. Yeah, she, yeah, she, so. yeah, she yeah. did. She right. interviewed them and she gave them their start. Right. But that doesn't mean that she started their. Um, uh, well, I don't. Know. I know, but maybe I'm treading. Well, but I but see, the people but. who want to be on those shows and reveal their, you know, most ugly underside somehow to the world. Yeah. I mean, th that's something else. I mean, they're they're really yeah. looking to to fill a hole, of, <laughs> obviously, <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> and be willing to to be on a television show and have, have right. people look in. And how about, sensationalism again. Yeah. yeah. You know? How crazy do the audience members really have to get? 
Have you noticed? Because yeah, it's just, that voyeurism again. I want to see this this uh, gal oh, just jump give, up and slap her husband on television. Okay. You know? I'm well, gonna, but yeah, I just have to give uh, Saturday Night Live one. Uh, Maya Rudolph did a takeoff on Oprah. Have you ever seen it? On, no, uh, I've okay. never seen that. I would highly suggest just watch that five minutes. It's beautiful. So, and that just has to—it has to deal with how crazy nuts the audience goes. Yeah, I, because she's put a, you know, a blender under their seat or something. I yeah. don't. Oh, you get a car, and you get a right, car, right, and you right. get a car. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. you know, but we that's live what, on greed. That's what's the the good point about Saturday Night Live is they comedy in general exposes yeah. a lot of that. It, yeah. And which is the wonderful. world needs more of mm -hmm. that, right. I think. Well, yeah. we have a comedian that we can watch anytime if you really want to. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Named Trump. Oh, and, oh um, <laughs> no, and he, he's an entertainer. I mean, yeah. let's cut to the chase here. He is an entertainer. Uh, and I, I, on I yeah. watched a little snippet of it today, and I just wanted to hang my head in shame to say I live in the United States, and this guy is here talking to people who love him. You know, I. Brings me back to our original, you know, is is, is he a, a cult leader yep. at this point? Oh, Absolutely. Uh, I so, believe so. Yeah. So he may not have hit all of Billy's 11 points, but <laughs> awful <laughs> lot majority. of them. I mean, he's somebody the majority, that, that yeah. says things and people do not question him. Intelligent people, you know, there were lawyers and people yeah. who should know better that... And I'm not talking I about want to know what they're getting out of it. I and, really, and I yeah, want to know why. Sure not going to pay him. <laughs> I want to know why the rest of of the political the the uh, the Republican Party hasn't just said no. You know, well, we they know did, he's I think in, they did in the beginning, but they're not now. now I they're think afraid. Trump has something on absolutely everybody, and if he doesn't have something on him, he can just say. Well, a lot of people are saying that. Oh, yeah. yeah blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But all he has to do is say that, that he doesn't think they're good. He doesn't even have to have mm -hmm. them. And they're yeah. all so terrified of him. I did, mm -hmm. the, well, the government just the doesn't work when it's that like they've that. caved into him. People don't stand up. In the beginning, they did stand up to him. They said, hey, don't you dare do that again kind of thing. But then that just made him feel more powerful because he knew, mm -hmm. well, I'm speaking for him and I really shouldn't. But I got the idea that that... All of that just fed into the idea, I can get people riled up, yeah. I can get people mm -hmm. thinking about me, I can get people into into my sphere, mm -hmm. and suddenly I'm the guy in the boxing ring, and, mm -hmm. and everybody has come to the game and they want to bet on whether or not I'm going to win. Being a, narcissist, being a narcissist, what he's doing right now and where he is, he is in absolute heaven. He, oh, he so, had never imagined that... He would yeah, be one of the most famous good. people in the world. The yeah. more indictments, well, the better. And yeah. I love it. And num this, I was going to say, number 10 and 11 speak to that very thing that I wrote down is a belief that the leader is the only means of knowing truth. Only and I can correct only I this can problem. Fix it. And cutting members off from each other Oof. if they leave. Mm -hmm. big, yeah. It's yeah. A big deal there. Yeah. 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 And then all well, it's being played out for us. Isn't it's it? being played yeah. out on the. He has yeah. a standard list of insults that he gives about people. Oh. I don't know. The so nut what, nut so, job is one of them. And so what job. do you do in a situation where it seems to us it's so obvious and it's so clear? What kind of power do we have besides, say, go to the voting booth? Obviously, that's, that's the power that we have. I mean, we don't have anybody competing in a way against this kind no, of thing. No, it, it's a, we have a very scary. Very scary. It is. I won't. Scary. Yeah, it, it is. is. Scary. We you know, people. The during the uh, uh, a week or so ago, there it was uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix and PBS had a lot of things about the Nazis, and and you look at those Hitler speeches and the Hitler ideas and things like yep. that. I mean, it's. Just I'm sure Trump did not read Mein Kampf because oh, it's a fairly complicated <laughs> book. Somebody gave him that line. But somebody may, yeah. But he's got, yeah, he's got poison, and and uh, Hitler used to always say, you know, I, only I can yeah, correct it. Yeah. And he says that, you know, if it wasn't, if if I were in power, they wouldn't have that war in the Middle East. And if yeah. I were in power, and only I can straighten, and only I can take care of, care of the mm -hmm. people who are poisoning our blood. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's it's. A, yeah. Vicious and vile. Very I can't think of all the rotten words to say yeah. about it. But <laughs> but the worst of it is that there are so many people who have 
lost their minds to it. And, and so their belief system has completely been turned over into that avenue. And I don't know how you get them back. I don't it's, know how you get them. It's, it's, we're, 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 it's the simple answer. Not long after he was elected, I had, I had a uh, uh, service person working on my propane, and, and he asked me what I thought of the, the election, and uh, I'm surprised he brought it up, but anyway, and hmm. he says, all I know is I get to keep my guns. Uh-huh. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, so, so I said, do you have any, any idea, even the slightest bit, how difficult it is to, to change uh, an amendment to the Constitution? It's damn near impossible. But, but, there, but the, the amendment, the Second Amendment, doesn't even give somebody the right to carry an AR-14. If, uh, if, if the people who wrote the Second Amendment stood in, 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 in the kindergarten classrooms with how many dead six-year-olds yeah. laying around, I think maybe it, they would have given, us, given that a second thought. Yeah, it talks about a well-organized militia have, yeah. having a right to bear arms. And if those scenes were enough that's, to change That's not mine. part of the quote that comes under the... No. <laughs> right. That's no. in the Second Amendment. St I know it is. Of course it is, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you can twist anything around to make it sound the way you think it ought to sound. That's And true. that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not a person who's got a pocket constitution that you can whip out at any moment and say, oh, it says right here, uh, most people just sit back and listen to somebody else tell them. I wish we had somebody on the panel here today who, who could speak to that, uh, to the other side of why they think Trump is the, the solution to our problems in this country. It would be well, I was, I was just going to say we're probably making a lot of people angry if they've even gotten as well, far. The, but if they want to disagree, <laughs> uh, they're welcome to come here and talk no, to us. I was going to say the ones that yeah. are, we, I, I believe we would all love to at least have the conversation about that. I'd yeah. like to understand with, it. You know, with that, uh, I'd love to understand it. Yeah. Before, yeah. before the last election, I wanted to have a... Uh, a debate or a conversation. I wanted to get two people that were for Trump and two people that were Democrat. I think we need to have. A well, believe it or not, I couldn't get anybody. Really, I went. I went to the to the Republican office, and uh, this was when everything was locked, and you had a knock, and they just opened the door, and everybody wanted to shake hands. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll have some people get in touch with you. Blah blah blah. I'm yeah. still waiting. Never heard. And the same yeah. thing from the Democrats. They did not well, have anybody that wanted to come on the radio. Well, oh, people it. are afraid to go out and, and state their truth for fear of a backlash. And, and that I is, mean, that's terrible. That's a shame. Is, too. That is too bad because it would be nice to have a, a meaningful and rational debate across party I, lines. And those I, I have a fewer and further, if that's the right way to say that, between, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't see many rational debates anymore. Well, th I think there's a need yeah. to create one. Yeah. What I do see rational is uh, when uh, I beat this drum before, but the NPR news media, if you will, I don't see any flame throwing too much on there. No, or, but or, you know, it's so boring. Well, <laughs> it's <laughs> really now boring. you've hit the nail on the head, Ray. People want exactly excitement. Oh. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, we're right down to the last minute here. So, all right. If anybody so has <laughs> anything left to say, they need to say it now or hold your peace till next oh, week anyway. Good. Until next time, mm. Mrs. Shirley Hyatt. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, we have we... 40 seconds. You have to oh. say more than that. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. In the meantime, don't go out and join LifeSpring or Est or, <laughs> or Heaven's Gate. <laughs> But you can but join, join KCIW. We are join. not yeah, cool. We and, are not a cult. And St. Tim's, you can join St. Tim's. There you give go. them a cup. Yes. Nice. They that that is true. Yeah. And you can start giving food to the food bank. Yes. Yeah. Do all the good things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Adios. Next week. Alrighty. See you later, alligator. Mm -hmm.